So let's get started. Start, sorry about all the technical difficulties there. Uh, my name is Dan Floria. I'm a product manager in the OpenStack team at VMware. And I'll be talking to you about OpenStack and VMware and how the two work together. Now, the schedule shows that Scott Lowe and Dan Wendland are supposed to be presenting, and the schedule is wrong. So you're stuck with me. So I know. OK, bye. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, before I get started, I just wanted to give you an overview of what's going on in this room this afternoon. So we have a couple of more sessions after this one. We have one, uh, the one right after this, Arvind, Sony, and Michael West are going to be going through a deep dive demo of the VMware integrated OpenStack product. And I'll talk to you a little bit about that product so you know what it is. And then uh, the last session, we'll do a hands-on lab where if you want to try OpenStack and see how OpenStack actually works with VMware. You can either follow along on your own laptops or you can just watch it and see, you know, there's a hands-on lab. You can also try it yourself later if you'd like. And then tomorrow there's a great session. Dan Wendland is going to be talking about OpenStack and VMware. So if you want additional information, kind of a, a good overview of all the activities um, around OpenStack from VMware, uh, that would be a great session to attend. Okay. For this session, I will hopefully keep it simple here. I'll go over what OpenStack is um, and just provide a definition that will help me explain to you how VMware plugs into that. And then I'll go over a couple of deployment options that you have for OpenStack on VMware, including, including the VMware integrated OpenStack product. And I'll give you a few links where you can learn more about it. Um, first of all, what I wanted to do is just make this really clear, um, the, the choices that you have when you're deploying OpenStack. So um, I think it's less prevalent today, but there's still this notion that OpenStack and VMware, you know, it's a fork in the road. You have to decide, you know, are you going to go OpenStack or are you going to go VMware? And in fact, the two work together. So you, you leverage VMware. You can leverage VMware as an underlying platform when you're running OpenStack. And what I'm hoping for is that this presentation will help you understand how that all fits together. And by the way, this is kind of an introductory. So if you're already expert ninjas in OpenStack, you know, this is probably a little bit um, too basic for you. Let's start by, by providing a definition for what OpenStack is. Now, everybody here is at the OpenStack Summit, so I'm sure everybody knows what OpenStack is. I just want to frame the discussion here to, to allow me to talk to you about how um, VMware plugs in. So OpenStack is a framework for providing developers with a cloud-style API on one end, and on the other end, providing you with a choice of virtual infrastructure. So you're basically getting an API on one side, and you're getting a, a choice of technologies that you want to put underneath. VMware being one of them. Now, when you're deploying OpenStack, you can see here there's, uh, you're, you're going to have a data center. You're going to have a bunch of compute. You're going to have storage, networking, uh, compute. Um, and what you want to do with OpenStack is create, um, put a framework around that to create a cloud where you can start consuming that infrastructure that you have in a, in a way that has a, this cloud-like API. So that's what OpenStack lets you do. First of all, it creates this abstraction around it to create a, a consumption, to allow you to have a consumption API that's a cloud-style API. And it also takes a variety of different technologies and has the ability to wrap those things into a, into a cloud. Once you've wrapped OpenStack into this consumption API framework, your application DevOps team or whoever is using that cloud can start you know, writing scripts, writing application management tools, whatnot. And those applications can take advantage of the OpenStack API, start making API calls to do things like provisioning, scaling up and down, doing code updates, whatever the application requires. For uh, you know, just one slide here to talk about some, some of the workloads that are targeted for OpenStack. So right now, generally, the applications that get targeted for OpenStack that we see are scale-out SaaS applications or web applications, 
test dev type of workloads. And these are, these are the kind of applications that need a lot of agility. So they need, you know, you're going to have an application that, or, or you're going to have some code that goes and deploys an application, and it needs to make changes a lot. So you need to create a VM, tear them down, scale up, scale down. So you need kind of an agile infrastructure, an agile API kind of um, infrastructure form that, that allows you to make these changes quick. And that's generally what we see. The people deploying OpenStack, this is what they're doing with it. Less so are the traditional tier one applications, um, whether they're tier one themselves or they're supporting a mission critical application. Like let's say you have a database that you're using maybe for a 911 call service or something like that. So we're seeing less of these kinds of applications that being deployed in OpenStack because these tend to be the type of applications that you deploy and then you are very careful with the settings on the VMs for these applications and you're, you're kind of managing them by hand and they, they need less agility than these kind of web SaaS type applications. So that's what we've seen so far. Um, some real world customer use cases. So this is kind of a representative set of common use cases that we've seen. So we worked with an information company that wanted to create an internal DevOps environment. They're already using AWS for an application that they're using. They're, this is a global company, so they want to use AWS because it gives them, um, they don't have data centers all over the world where they need them, and AWS gives them that. But in addition to that, they're looking at leveraging their IT environment for providing this DevOps environment. We worked with a large web company, and this is not like Google or Yahoo. It's not that big, but it's still pretty big. Um, and they wanted to provide an AWS-style internal offering to developers. This is a pretty common thing that you would hear. We want an AWS-style API, but we want to bring it in-house. Um, an enterprise that we talked to, they wanted to do self-provisioning, uh, to allow developers to do self-provisioning. Essentially what they said is I don't want support tickets. You know, I don't want somebody to come to me and tell me that they need a VM. I just want to let them do their own, th their own thing, let them do it themselves so that I, I don't have to spend time on it. And uh, finally, we, well not finally, but just final example. We talked to a financial company and this is another thing that we've heard from a, a few customers where they have a corporate mandate. Basically their management is saying that thou shalt use OpenStack and typically, I think the reason that, that the corporate mandate comes is that upper management wants to have the vendor neutrality of the API so that they can have a choice on, on the infrastructure that they want to use. Okay, so now I'll start talking about how you deploy OpenStack and VMware together. And to do that, first we can look at the architecture of vSphere and OpenStack. My goal here is to kind of, um, I'm assuming that there are people in the room who have pretty good VMware experience and what I want to do is explain it a little bit from, from that point of view. vSphere is a tightly coupled architecture and this is not good or bad, it's just it was designed for a different purpose than OpenStack and this, you know, it's designed so that everything runs in vCenter and between vCenter and ESX, there's this particular way that you deploy it. And it's just, you know, kind of together as one thing. And this is different from OpenStack, which is a lot more distributed and a lot more loosely coupled. Now, I know this slide is a little bit daunting to look at. Um, it's probably a bit dated as well, but I think it's a good representation if you want to get into more details of how what OpenStack looks like. And you know, it, it looks complex, but I think any significant or any large scale software system, if you go to enough detail, you're going to have a diagram like this. So it's really, it looks a little scary, but I don't think it's that scary from any other software systems out there. So the point, to, the point here is that it's a distributed architecture. It uses a message bus. It uses a common database. You can deploy this in a variety of ways. You can deploy it on bare metal. You can deploy it in a VM. You can deploy it in a vSphere cluster, you can you have a variety of configuration options that you can choose from. Um, as long as, as these components have connectivity, so you have a network that connects all these things together, and as long as you have a database that they can all access so they have the shared state, you're, 
pretty much good. Of course, there's a lot of complexity to deploy it, but that's kind of what you need in this architecture. And we can simplify this picture as well. I mean, you can, yeah, we'll go through this and simplify it. So first of all, up there sits the Horizon dashboard, and this is the GUI that you see in OpenStack. The Swift object store, if you abstract out the details, then you can look at just, you know, it's a box. Of course, each one of these components, as you hear about all of them, they're not just necessarily one service. There are a variety of processes working together and coordinating over a message bus and using MySQL or what, whatever database underneath. Glance is used for image storage. Nova, probably one of the most significant projects in OpenStack, is used for compute. Cinder for block storage. Neutron is the networking project. And finally, Keystone is used for authentication. Okay. Now that we have that out of the way, I think we can talk about how OpenStack and VMware work together. And, and what the, you know, I, I, at the beginning I talked about OpenStack providing a northbound API and then allowing you to plug in a variety of virtual infrastructure technologies underneath. And the way that OpenStack allows you to do this is through a plug-in or driver model. So here you can see Nova, Cinder, Glance, Neutron. And for each of those, VMware has contributed drivers. So uh, we have our own drivers, just like anybody else in OpenStack. And these drivers know how to talk to our particular technology. Right? No different than anybody else. So when an API comes in, let's say you get an API, you go into Horizon and you create a VM or you create an instance. That gets translated into an API request to Nova, which goes to the Nova scheduler, which goes to the, to the VMware vCenter driver, which then calls vCenter, which then calls ESX, which then finally creates a VM. And it's a similar path with all of these other projects. So when you create a volume, the, you go into Horizon, you create the volume, it goes to Cinder, Cinder calls the appropriate driver, and the driver goes to vCenter and creates the, the volume in the, in the data store in our case. The same, it's the same model with the other components, so I won't go through them. Um, the one that's a little bit different here is that for us, the, the NSX driver talks to the NSX controller, not to necessarily to vCenter. Any questions? Yeah. yeah. Sorry, can I have a question? Um, in Nova Compute, directly talk to ESXi, because this driver was maintained by VMware earlier, and it was swapped for um, this model, and is there any plan to restore this functionality? Uh, no, actually, so there was a driver written. It was actually not created by VMware. There was a driver in the community that talked from Nova directly to the ESX hosts, and that wasn't a driver that VMware supported. Uh, the one that the driver that VMware introduced was the one that talks to vCenter, and that's the one going forward. I'm not sure if the ESX driver has been deprecated. I think there were discussions that it was going to get deprecated, but I'm not sure if it's been done or not. Yes. Are each of these drivers produced by VMware, and also are they open source? They're all open sourced. Yeah, all of our drivers are in open source, just like any other driver in OpenStack, and these are all written by VMware. So. NSX, the NSX driver has been there since day one of Quantum. Quantum was renamed Neutron a, a year or two ago, but the NSX driver has been there since day one. Um, we added the Nova vCenter driver about a year and a half ago in the Grizzly release, and Cinder, the Cinder driver was added in Havana a year ago, and the Glance driver we introduced six months ago in the Icehouse release. So, and they're all written by VMware, but they're all upstream. I mean, it's not just VMware, it's other people contributing as well. Other questions? Clear? All right. So this, what this picture attempts to do is give you kind of a block diagram of how kind of technically how the plugin model works in OpenStack and how it works with VMware. And you know, hopefully it shows you that it works just like any other kind of plugin or driver in OpenStack, and frankly, this is kind of the driver, the model you would use it for your printer or something, right? It kind of works in a similar way. 
Now we can zoom out a little bit and look at an entire OpenStack cloud. So if you're running, you know, you're going to deploy OpenStack in your private cloud, in your data center, there are a variety of choices that you have to make. And that's what we're attempting to show here. There are bu a bunch of layers here. And at each layer, as a cloud infrastructure admin or team, you have a, to make a decision of what you want to use. So you're going to have to choose, obviously, your hardware. You're going to have to choose what virtualization technology you want to use. If you're using, op using OpenStack, you've already made the decision on, on this layer here because you're using OpenStack. And then you also have to make choices on what you want to use for operations and management. If you run with OpenStack on top of VMware, for compute, you're going to be using the ESX, ESX hosts and vCenter. For networking, you're running with NSX. And for storage, you can leverage vCenter data stores. In addition to that, any, any deployment of OpenStack, you have to consider how my, once you deploy, I know, you know, I'm going to talk about deployment too, and it sounds like it's the end game. It's not. That's just the beginning. Once you've deployed OpenStack and you're running this in production, you obviously have to maintain it, operate it, manage it, you know, kind of keep it up and running. And you, whatever solution you go for with OpenStack, you're going to need to have some tools around that for uh, log management, for just operations and management. And the, the, solution from, the solutions from Cisco, from, Cisco, from VMware, are uh, VR Ops, Log Insight, um, and ITBM. And uh, on the management layer, vRealize Automation and Cloud Foundry as well. OK, now we've gone through block levels. We've gone through the different layers of your cloud deployment. We've gone through all this stuff. And it's easy to kind of get lost in the weeds. So I just want to make sure that, that everybody understands that when you're running OpenStack with VMware, you're still using both vCenter and OpenStack. So you're using both the Horizon GUI. So you're using the Horizon GUI for doing things like, obviously, you're going to use it for tenant workloads. So when you create VMs, tenants want to create VMs or volumes, things like that, you're going to use the Horizon GUI or you're going to use the OpenStack API. If you want to do infrastructure management, so let's say you want to add clusters, you want to add data stores. If you want to do things like that, then you're going to do that through vCenter. Also, if you want to, let's say you want to turn on HA in a cluster, there's nothing in the OpenStack API that would let you do that or tweak DRS or something like that. All of those things are still done through vCenter. Um, the OpenStack API is really mostly meant as a consumption API. So it's meant to standardize how you create a virtual machine, how you create a network. Um, it's much harder to try to standardize on how you manage your infrastructure because the, the, it, it's just, you know, the way you manage a KVM deployment or, you know, the way you manage your network with uh, VMware NSX versus a Cisco solution or something is going to be very different. So standardizing on the management is, is well, it's not been done yet. So hopefully it's kind of clear how the two, t the two sides fit together. Um, we can now start talking about how you would actually deploy. So how, you know, this is how it all plugs in. But if you want to have OpenStack running on top of VMware in your environment, how do you actually make that happen? How do you get that installed? So one way to not do it is to you know, go and do a git clone and start pulling down code and trying to install this yourself. You can go down this route. Um, it's not recommended. I think um, you know there, there are people who have tried, and it's not just. I think it's just OpenStack in general trying to just go from scratch and pull code from upstream. It's is difficult, and especially for us, for for our VMware customers, for VMware admins, what we wanted to do is provide them a way of deploying OpenStack on top of VMware, not only in a way that's easy easy to deploy, but we wanted to do it in a way that's, that's intuitive for a vSphere admin. So VMware admins are not necessarily Linux, Linux or OpenStack experts, right? They're VMware experts. So we wanted to let them deploy and operate OpenStack on top of their VMware infrastructure, leveraging their existing skills. So you basically, you already know how to run VMware. 
make it as easy as possible for me to run OpenStack on top of that. So for that, we introduced a new product called VMware Integrated OpenStack. And this product right now is in a private beta. And the goal is to make it the fastest and most reliable way of getting production grade OpenStack cloud on top of VMware infrastructure. So what is VMware Integrated OpenStack? I'm going to give you kind of a broad view of what it is and what the different components are. And after this session, there'll be a demo that walks you through exactly how this works. But at a high level, what this product is, um, first of all, you're starting with an existing vSphere environment. So you, we assume that you have vSphere running, you have um, vCenter, you have clusters, data stores, all the stuff that you would normally have in a VMware environment. On top of that, um, VIO, VMware Integrated OpenStack, is, is uh, delivered as an OVA that you download and install in your vCenter. And it's already got the drivers kind of built in for you. It's the architecture of it is a kind of a tested, validated reference architecture that, we, that is just part of it that you automatically get. It has integrated tools for installation, for upgrades, for workflows like adding clusters and adding data stores to your installation and things like that. So it's really trying to <laughs> simplify the, the deployment here. And in addition to that, this is not part of VIO, but it's something that, as I mentioned earlier, you will need tools. Once you've deployed, you will need tools that let you manage and operate and troubleshoot the installation. And together, that's kind of the overall overarching VIO solution, right? You start with an existing VM vSphere environment, you add VIO, you use VMware tools like VROps and Log Insight for management operations and troubleshooting. You get a fully validated architecture and you get a single support con contact so you can call VMware for any trouble you have from OpenStack all the way down to the infrastructure. So that's kind of the, the short pitch. Going one level deeper uh, to show you what the, the exact components here are in VIO. First of all, as I mentioned, you start with your existing VMware infrastructure. So you're going to have a vCenter server, you're going to have ESX hosts, you need to have a management cluster with, a th with three ESX hosts, you need to have a compute uh, cluster for tenant workloads, you're going to have to have some data stores, NSX, all these things. All this stuff is not part of VIO, it's just kind of the base infrastructure that you need. Oops. On top of that, you're, when you install VIO, you're adding Nova, Cinderglance, Neutron. Of course, there's also Keystone and Horizon and, and the other projects. But these are the projects that have uh, plugins or drivers that are VMware specific. So when you're deploying, we already know that you're deploying on top of vSphere, so we pre-configure pre it for you. There's no con additional configuration that you have to make. It's already, the drivers are already loaded in. They're already configured to talk to your underlying infrastructure. Um, additionally, also I should mention that there are a lot of configuration options. When you deploy, actually every, every single service here, Nova, Cinder, Glance, they have hundreds of different configuration options. And if you kind of mix and match them together, if you, you know, you end up with an explosion of options that you have. And we've basically fixed most of that configuration for you. So we've kind of made those configuration decisions. Strobe lights. There is also a VIO server that lets you do installation. It lets you do you know, the workflows, the upgrade, all that stuff. And all of this in the orange box is what VIO essentially is. It's based on a VMware OpenStack distribution. So it's an official distro. It's delivered as an OVA, and I should also mention that it's currently based on Icehouse. It's based on the Icehouse release. We do plan to keep this up to date. So as, we, as OpenStack releases progress, it's in our interest definitely to, to stay in sync with that. And this is just a, maybe a sneak preview into what you're going to see in the following session of what it looks like. And it hopefully gives you a feel of, you know, of what it looks like from, from a, a vCenter point of view. So 
as I mentioned, we really tried to make this friendly to a VMware admin. So we want to make it intuitive and use kind of a workflow that is, is something that a, a VMware admin would be used to. So when you, when you install and deploy your OVA, it goes in your vCenter and then you double click that and you go through a configuration wizard that lets you install. Okay. So when you deploy with VIO, you get you know, the, the architecture is fixed for you. So we have, it's a production grade architecture. So you get redundant load balancers, you get active active controllers, you get a replicated database. You, your configuration options are, are pre-configured. This is a, an architecture that we use internally actually inside VMware. We run it in a production OpenStack cloud. We know it works, we've tested it, all this stuff. There are cases where customers are gonna fall outside of that kind of box that we drew. What we tried to do is constrain the problem to make it simpler and more repeatable so that customers can, can deploy this easily and customers can do this, you know, m many customers can do this easily. But there are customers who are gonna fall outside of, of what we kind of designed here in terms of architecture and they're too, if they're too far outside of that box that we drew, then we still want customers to be running OpenStack on top of VMware infrastructure so in those cases, we would recommend that you work with one of our distro partners. So I've listed them here. And you can use one of these distro partners to hopefully accommodate your use case. So if you have specific requirements and VIO is just not quite a fit for you, this is the best route to go. So I am at the end here, so we talked about what OpenStack is, we talked about kind of the framework model of having a, a vendor neutral API and the technology choice that you have to fit in underneath and hopefully at this point it's clear that VMware is one of the choices that you have, they're not opposing technologies, you don't choose between OpenStack and VMware, you use OpenStack and then you choose which hypervisor platform you want, you want to use underneath. Do you want to use vSphere, do you want to use KVM? So that's kind of the decision point. Uh, we talked about OpenStack workloads um, and how VMware integrates with OpenStack. We talked about the, the loosely coupled and the tightly coupled architecture differences between vSphere and OpenStack, the driver model of how we plug in, and deployment choices. So if you wanna learn more, first of all, there is a hands-on lab that you can do yourself whenever you like. So the link is here, you can go. Um, we're also gonna have a session later today where we walk you through this. If you have questions, there's a community site where you can go. And finally, if you're interested in trying out VIO, there's a beta site where you can go request access to the private beta. Questions? What distro is your OVA based on? It's based on IceHouse. Oh, it's based on IceHouse, but it's a VMware distro. What distro, what OpenStack distro, or? So is it like CD or Red Hat? Yeah. Oh, I see, so we install, um, I mean the OS, we give it to you as a black box. So when you, when you deploy VIO, you will deploy it and then the operating system that we use internally is essentially not, I mean it's constrained, right? So I can tell you, but it, it's, re it's really from a customer point of view, it really shouldn't matter from a user point of view. Right now it's Ubuntu. Well, I mean, there are differences between those products, differences in capabilities versus OpenStack and what it provides. And this is, you know, some customers want to use OpenStack, so we provide that choice, right? So if, if VCAC is a better choice for you, then that's the way, that's the way you would go. And, and you know, we can talk maybe afterwards. There are differences between the two and what VCAC and what OpenStack provide you. It's just kind of a, a business decision of which product is the right one for you. Yes? You need Enterprise Plus. 
um, you need NSX. That's the way that you get. Otherwise, if you don't do that, you can't use Neutron capabilities. There is a basic mode in VIO where you can get provider networks only with no security groups. And then you can go with uh, distributed virtual switch only. More questions? No? OK. So the next session is a technical deep dive into VIO, into VMware Integrated OpenStack. So if you're interested in seeing this in action and getting a better feel for it, stick around. <laughs>